you know, often there's a misconception out there that talent intelligence and people analytics are the same thing. I mean, I suppose the names themselves could arguably be quite similar, you know, and of course there are similarities, um, but they're also very different. Um, and you present this wonderfully in the book. But, but for those who haven't yet read the book, um, you know, could you share your thoughts on, on the differences between the two? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I think there's some, there's some operational differences I see, and there's some almost philosophical differences. Um, I'd say uh, operationally, generally, people analytics, and I, I bow to you on this one because you know this space way better than me, but people analytics generally, I'd say, is looking at the internal efficiencies, the internal metrics, the internal KPIs, um, looking at your attrition rates, your talent flows, etc., internally and saying, what, what, how are we performing? How is this going? And, and it's that internal reflection. And there's some um, uh, obviously, you've got the, the HR analytics, people analytics, maturity curve, where you go from kind of reporting to analysis through to kind of the, the more intelligence and, and the advisory, etc. Um, but generally speaking, it's it's looking at internal data and trying to understand our internal landscape and, and how that sits. Generally speaking, TI is the external piece and it's looking at the external lens, external landscape. Um, where, where the gray area comes is when they merge because neither of them have complete power unless you bring this stuff together. And I think you see some sub functions where this merges faster and much more um, acutely. So things like talent acquisition analytics. Quite often it's a sub function. Quite often it's not sat within people analytics, HR analytics, where I think it should sit personally. Um, but that, that's a very obvious obvious starting point where you can say, well, actually, we can see this internally from the, the, the CRM systems and the ATS systems. This is the external. All right, we need to get get that together. And I, and I think that that we're going to see more and more of those gray areas and we'll talk about the evolution in a second but i think i think generally i'd say hr analytics people analytics the primary is internal and the secondary may be some external context ti is just the opposite primary is the external you're going to use some internal for context um i'd say the more philosophical piece as well though is generally with, with hr people analytics i'd say if you're looking into a problem statement, it's a hypothesis first methodology. So you've got a hypothesis and then you're looking to the data to prove or disprove that hypothesis. And it's, it's a much more academic approach. Whereas generally in TI, it's more of a business problem that you're trying to solve. So you're, 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 it's, a, it's a broader inquisitive study that you end up going down more rabbit holes and you're never quite as tight on the parameters. Um, so it, it's a slightly different methodology. Both have their pros and cons. But I'd say generally most TI teams are coming from that slightly less academic and hypothesis-based approach, but it's more of an inquisitive study. Whereas generally I'd say TA, uh, uh, people analytics, HR analytics, uh, um, have that slightly tighter rigor on that academic approach. In this series, we will be speaking to a range of senior leaders who are pushing a data-driven and digital HR agenda. Make sure that you subscribe by your podcast app of choice and also via our YouTube channel for free and regular interviews with the digital HR leaders of the future.